So today we're going to talk about the two focus property of ellipses and hyperbolas. Now this property we've already talked about in the past just without naming it. Um, the property is that ellipses and hyperbolas each have two foci each. So that's actually how they're defined, right? We, when we talked about an ellipse, we introduced it as saying that if you can take any point on the ellipse, such as x, y, and you take the distance, we'll call it L1, to one of the foci, and you add it to the distance from the other focus, L2, then that sum of L1 plus L2 is always constant. For a hyperbola, it's uh, a difference, where L1 minus L2 is always constant no matter what. So today, we're simply going to apply it um, and see how we can use it um, to solve problems. So uh, first off, we're going to say that I have an ellipse here with foci at positive or negative 4, 0. So this would be negative 4, 0 and positive 4, 0. And I'm going to say the constant sum is 10. So I can take any point on the ellipse, and if I add its distance from the first focus plus its distance to the second focus, I will always get 10. And we're going to try to generate an equation of the ellipse based on this requirement, on this constraint. So this is kind of a, a different set of information that I can give you at the, up front to have you then figure out what the equation is. So if I use the distance formula, um, I can calculate what L1 and L2 are. So L1 is equal to the square root of x plus 4 squared plus y squared, where this is the distance to the focus at uh, negative 4, 0, since x minus negative 4 is positive 4. And L2 is going to be equal to the square root of x minus 4 squared plus y squared. We're lucky that our foci, foci are located um, on the x-axis, so that at least one of our terms is, is nice. And then I know that L1 plus L2 has to be equal to 10, which means that this square root plus this square root is going to be equal to 10. So I'm going to write the square root of x plus 4 squared plus y squared plus the square root of x minus 4 squared plus y squared is equal to 10. And now we have to solve this and get like a nice equation for x and y. So this process does have a lot of algebra. And you want to make sure you're just being careful, uh, as always, to make sure that you don't lose any uh, signs or you don't lose any squares or square roots or anything like that and you FOIL correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract uh, one of these from both sides. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to choose the one on the right. So I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of x plus 4 squared plus y squared equals 10 minus the square root of x minus 4 squared plus y squared. And this way, I can now square both sides and then I'll get rid of one of my square roots. We're still going to have another one. We're going to have to go through that too, but we're going to get rid of this one first. So I square both sides, and I'm left with x plus 4 squared plus y squared is equal to, when I square this, I get 100 minus 20 times the square root of x minus 4 squared plus y squared plus x plus 4 squared plus y squared since one of them, uh, the square root goes away on. So now that I have all this stuff, uh, I'm going to just factor all this stuff out and like foil it out um, and then try to combine some like terms. So right away, oh, let's see, hold on. I'm sorry, this should be a minus sign. My mistake. It's like otherwise everything would just cancel. So this should be a minus sign, right? We squared uh, this term here, so that's a minus. Okay, so this is going to give me x squared plus 8x plus 16. Uh, our y squareds cancel, and I get that that's going to be equal to 100 minus 20 times the square root of x minus 4 squared plus y squared. Uh, and then plus x squared minus 8x plus 16. So now I can start combining some stuff. My x squareds are going to cancel out. My 16s are going to cancel out. And I'm going to be left um, just with a 16x when I add 8x to both sides. So I have 16x 
And now I'm going to subtract this 100 from both sides. So I have 16x minus 100. And I'm left with negative 20 times the square root of x minus 4 squared plus y squared. So this is kind of cleaned up pretty nicely here. Um, now I'm going to divide everything by 5, just because I noticed that it's a common factor. So, uh, sorry, not 5, 4. 5 uh, does not divide 16. So this is going to be 4x minus 25 is equal to negative 5 times the square root of x minus 4 squared plus y squared. And from here, we're going to square both sides again uh, to get rid of this square root. So now when I square both sides, I get 16x squared minus 200x plus 625 is equal to 25 times x minus 4 squared plus y squared. Uh, now I'm going to distribute all of this stuff, foil all that out, and I should get 16x squared minus 200x plus 625 is equal to 25 x squared minus 200x, 25 times negative 8x, plus 400, which is going to be 16 times 25, and then plus 25 y squared. Okay, So once I have this equation, I am again going to collect all my like terms. When I collect my like terms, I'm just going to get make some space here to my like terms and I'm going to get negative uh, 9x squared minus 25y squared equals negative 225 and this is the nice kind of elliptical equation we're used to where I divide everything by negative 225 and I get x squared over 25 plus y squared over 9 is equal to 1 and this is the equation of my ellipse so as you can see, the process is heavily algebraic. You have to be really careful with your multiplication. There are a lot of uh, individual operations that you are doing here. Um, so just be careful of that. And in the end, you should get a, a nice elliptical equation. Um, so your signs should all match, right? If you got, you know, if you're missing a sign here where this is positive or this one is positive, you know you did something wrong because we started out with an ellipse. Um, so that's how you do it for an ellipse. You do hyperbolas the same way, but there's one thing that I want to note for hyperbolas. Uh, let's say for hyperbolas, I said my constant difference um, was going to be 10. Constant difference is 10. And I tell you there's a uh, foci at, same thing as the ellipse, positive or negative 4, 0. So basically the same exact setup that we have with the ellipse, except this time it's a hyperbola. So when I start this one, we still do all the distance formula stuff the same. So I would have x plus 4 squared plus y squared uh, minus the square root of x minus 4 squared plus y squared equals 10. But I don't know that this difference is equal to 10 because this one could be smaller than this one and then it would be negative 10. So I have to say that the absolute value of the difference here is equal to 10. And this makes it really awkward because then we say, well, now that means I want to add this to both sides, right? I can't do that. So what I have to actually do is say, and I'm going to keep this just as, uh, so this is, we'll say L2 minus L1 for now. Uh, is equal to, and if I get rid of the absolute value bars, I turn this into positive or negative 10. Okay, but the nice thing that's going to happen here is in the end, because we're squaring so many things, the absolute value bars end up not really mattering. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to go L2 equals positive or negative 10 plus L1. And then uh, I'm going to square both sides, right? So if I square both sides, I get L2 squared is equal to this positive or negative 10 squared is going to be the same thing. So I have 100. And then the middle term will not be the same, right? The middle term is still going to be uh, plus or minus 20 L1 plus L1 squared. So we still have the positive or negative there. But then what happens is then we get this piece by itself, right? Because this term is the one that still has the square root in it. Because this is no longer square rooted and there's nothing here. And this is also no longer square rooted because anytime you square one of these lengths, this root goes away. So then I end up saying 
L2 squared minus L1 squared minus 100 equals positive or negative 20 L1. And now when I square both sides, whether this is positive or negative, it doesn't matter. So that is to say, um, as you're going through this hyperbola process, you know, it's, it's good to, you should always start out like this because the statement is true. Um, and uh, it, it, in an ideal world, if you were doing this very carefully, you would include the plus or minus all the way through until it goes away from the square. Um, most people tend to not remember to do that, um, but at least this is why it works. So if you're troubled at all by the fact that, oh, wait, this minus this might not be 10, it could be negative 10, right? So that's why we have the absolute value bars. And if you're troubled by us trying to do operations when we have absolute value bars and just pretending they go away, um, it's not because we're pretending, it's because they really do go away because we're squaring everything um, so many times, okay? So that's the two-focus property of ellipses and hyperbolas. Thanks for watching.